What is up everyone, welcome back to Lexa Lexus. Today it is the championship review for the four games we had in match day 24. In the second part of the video, I'm gonna predict the current eight games that have not been postponed as of yet for match day 25. Hopefully we'll still have all eight of these games, but knowing the EFL and these clubs, there'll be some of these games that'll be canceled within last minute. <laughs> For Let's 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 Football Prediction League will be shown a little bit later on the community tab. But to let you know, there's really not been much change. And actually only one viewer got a correct score entirely. Well done to Jamie Kane. And out of all of the scores to get right, he got Huddersfield and Blackpool spot on to finish 3-2 to Huddersfield. Wow. What a result that was. Now, if you guys like what you see, please give the video a like. It does tremendously help the channel. Let's try and get to 20 likes. It'll be fantastically appreciative. Please do hit the subscribe button. If you've not done so, it will really be appreciative. We're trying to get to 900 subs now. It'll be really helpful for the channel. And please share this channel to as many people as you can. All of that really helps. But without any further ado, but without any further ado, let's review on what happened in this weekend's games. So let's talk about the dramatic game we had in the John Smith Stadium because this was a roller coaster game. It ended 3 2 to Huddersfield, and we saw two goals in the opening three minutes of the match. And Huddersfield completed a comeback, getting two goals in four minutes. I mean, it was so fast paced this game. It was a real traditional championship game, which was amazing to watch. Now, Jerry Yates took the lead within the first minute. I mean, Tom Lees gave the ball away, which initially started Blackpool's attack. It was a good build-up to the goal in the end, but Tom Lees can't be giving the ball to a straight to the opposition within the first 20 seconds of the game. That really just shows the lack of sharpness there. So hopefully Tom Lees can improve on that. That made it 1-0 to Blackpool. But Danny Ward equalised very quickly on. Saar started the attack, managing to loop a brilliant ball to Harry Toffolo. Harry Toffolo being incredible as always. Cross comes in, header one by Ward. Very good in the air, 1-1. One, one. And I thought, okay, this might be interesting here. And not much took to separate them, but Gary Medine, within a couple of minutes later, actually restored Blackpool's lead. And this one was a really worked goal as well. Brilliant work by Josh Bowler in the build-up of this. Keshi Anderson deserves credit as well. Looping the ball over the back line and Medine winning the header to make it 2-1. Now, most of the game, it was 2-1 Blackpool. Now, the moment which I think changed the game and fortunes for Blackpool was Gabriel getting the second yellow card and getting sent off. When I saw the initial challenge which got him sent off, I thought it definitely was at least a yellow. Very reckless, very dangerous and got nowhere near the ball. So I don't know why Gabriel thought that was a good idea. And then obviously what happened, it allowed Huddersfield to try and express more and get back into this. And Sorba Thomas, the first goal he scored, showed glimpses of how special of a player he was at the start of the season. And it's interesting to see him perform now, especially near the transfer window. His second goal wasn't as special, I don't think. It was a corner that wasn't really well cleared. Sorba Thomas found the space, managed to get enough of a touch to get the ball into the net, which made it 3-2. And i got to say, Huddersfield really fought hard. And I think there's quality there. There is potential with this team I think the issue is is consistency if they improve their consistency they'd be a threatening team but following um, the games that actually took place they're currently in the top six of course playing a lot more games than the teams around them Blackpool find themselves in 13th place just after the halfway stage not an awful position to be in they've hit the 30 point mark but Blackpool definitely need to be very, very careful, especially when keeping the lead as well. They've been guilty of throwing leads away in the past. The second game between Middlesbrough and Forest ended 2-0 to Middlesbrough. It was the exact same scoreline in the reverse fixture. No change in the scoreline here. Both teams, of course, by that time have upgraded to a brand new manager, which has improved them in their own ways. But Middlesbrough went out on top. And I've got to say, based on what I saw with chances, I think they deserved it. The disappointing part with Forest is how toothless they looked going forward. Yes, they hit the post from Lewis Graben at one stage near the end of the game, but apart from that, 
Chances weren't really plentiful with Forest. It was Middlesbrough that were creating the chances. Now, the first goal was very fortuitous for them. A bit of a miscommunication between Ryan Yates and Brees Samba there. And it's not the only miscommunication which leads to a goal that we're going to talk about today. But Ryan Yates just simply just gets pressured by Middlesbrough's press. And he doesn't really think carefully about the back pass. It takes it way past the reach of Samba, which made it 1-0 to Middlesbrough. And honestly, as soon as Middlesbrough took the lead, they were so comfortable. And the fact that they rallied forward to get a second, it disappointed me that Forrest didn't really show enough guts to try and deal with that sort of pressure and rally forward. That's the path disappointed with. You know, they've been unbeaten for so long, Forrest, and I thought that they could find a way to try and nick something. You know, even if it was a draw, you know, it would be a very typical Forrest performance. They were so uncharacteristically poor from them. Spora got the second goal. Much better build up to that goal. You know, at least it was an actual proper goal in scored by an intended Middlesbrough player. Great start to make it 2-0 Middlesbrough and I've got to say they deserve it. And Chris Wilder is working wonders with his Middlesbrough team. A team that was not really doing that well with Warlock, you know, going as low as 17th of one stage in this season. Now they're up in the top six for the first time this season. I've got to say, if you can improve consistency, Middlesbrough might be a team that will be difficult to get out of there. You know, they'll be in dreamland at the moment with Forest. I lost a little bit of ground getting into the top six, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I think the good thing about Forrest and Steve Cooper, Steve Cooper's done this twice already before. He knows the sort of performances and the strategy to get into the top six. So I have no doubt in my mind, I think Forrest will definitely try and rally on and improve. Is the great escape on for Derby County as they beat West Brom by one goal to nil? But look at those stats here. I think Derby had the lowest XG out of all of the teams in the championship, but they won 1-0. This is the sort of result that really defines what football is. You can be a team that are not really good at creating chances, but you only need one chance, one opportunity. And West Brom just let it slip. They really, really did. They really had so many chances and they really should have done better with them. Especially with the likes of Hugo, who got substituted uh, and later on. And a lot of their attacking players, Dean Garner, Grant, these players, and especially Robinson, I thought were very, very poor. Now, Derby took the lead from a very comedic miscommunication between Cedric Kipre and Johnston. A lot of flack has been put on Johnston, but I do question why Kipre has headed the ball so hard towards him. But at the same time, Johnston should have a better control there. Conor Kazim Richards just simply had to shoot from distance as an early goal, and he did so successfully, which made it 1 0. And what was really striking to me was West Brom's squad is so expensive. Dean Garda by himself cost 12 million. This Derby squad, full of academy players, a whole squad combined of 1 million only. You know, Dean Garner's 12 times more expensive than Derby's squad that beat them by one goal to nil. So, a big upset in this game. But, credit to Derby and Wayne Rooney. I think the youthful players he's brought in, I think, have really elevated them. With West Brom, I really do fear that they're not really taking their chances and being very toothless going forward. I think Ishmael definitely needs to work on that. If anything, he needs to get a striker. Someone like Dal DK, that's really worked well for him when he joined Barnsley. Maybe that might be the signing that West Brom might need. And finally, the game between QPR and Bournemouth ended 1-0 Bournemouth. Bournemouth are back to winning ways. And following this, they are now regained their top position in the championship. Was it deserved? I think for me, yes. I think it was deserved based on the chances that I did see in this game. And the goal scorer in the end was Dominic Solanke. Now, he missed an absolute sitter before he actually scored a goal. It was a free header, and he headed it wide of the post. And I was thinking, oh, gosh, it's going to be one of those days where Bournemouth, once again, have all these chances, and they just miss them. Full credit to them. They really, really stepped up. They won a free kick, which I think was a bit controversial how it was won. But the free kick was set. Solanke with the header, 1-0, and it's as simple as that. Now, QPR did force a couple of chances, but for me, they didn't really look as fluid and not really themselves. You know, they had over three weeks off as a break. And we've seen it with teams where have a long period away from football. Some play incredible. You know, the likes of Spurs played incredible when they got a draw against Liverpool. But then you can see teams that look like a pre-season team when they're playing, like Manchester United last night. And I think QPR were exactly that as well. They were definitely off with the pace. 
And it was worse when Dozzle picked up a red card as well. There was a bit of a brawl at the end of the game, which, you know, it's always exciting to see the drama of it, but never nice when you see players fighting. And obviously Dozzle in the end of it got a second yellow and sent off in the end. So it'll be a blow to QPR when he's absent from the team. Good win for Bournemouth. First place now. They just got to stay consistent. That's literally the most simple thing I can only request of them. And they've really got to take their chances. I think similarly with West Brom, for some reason, they've just got this real bad habit of missing chances. And they need to try and address that, whether it's new signings or whether it's just more confidence. I think as soon as they address it, I think West Brom will be dangerous. QPR, they've fallen out of the top six. Now, what I'll say with them, I think maybe they clearly didn't feel too good in terms of having that long period of break. I think if they could just improve their sharpness and their fitness, I think they will recover. And just like that, we're already done with our review. So the table looks like this. Bournemouth first by one point, but have played one game more from Fulham. Blackburn, West Brom, Middlesbrough and Huddersfield now in the top six. So the top six has completely changed. QPR and Stoke fall out of the top six now. Now teams in danger, you're looking at Cardiff, Reading and Peterborough, Barnsley and Derby. Look at that, seven points on the board following that win. They are now 14 points off safety. So to find the end of this video, guys, here are my score predictions for match day 25. Make sure, guys, you leave your predictions in the comments down below. Blackburn, Barnsley, I think for me, Blackburn will still continue with their really, really strong form. I don't see Barnsley being a team that can stop Blackburn in their stride. Blackburn are clinical. Barnsley have just not been clinical. So I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory for Blackburn. Blackpool and Middlesbrough is interesting because I think Blackpool can be a threat to Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough have been steadily improving under Wilder. And I think Middlesbrough, obviously, with a quick turnaround, and in fact, the same with Blackpool, we've both played in the weekend. So they're going to be similarly fresh and sharp based on their last match. So it's tough to predict. I was thinking the draw, but actually, I might edge Middlesbrough. I think they could start going on a run now. So I'm going to go for a 2 1 away victory to Middlesbrough. Commentary and Millwall now both. Teams have had a really long, substantial break. You know, Mirwell especially had a really bad COVID outbreak in their squad. I might go for one more draw. I think it's going to be very difficult to predict the games with teams that have been away for a while. You know, we saw QPR really, really struggle, but obviously some could relish not having football for quite some time, but some could really struggle. Now Wednesday's game. So Bournemouth Cardiff. This is the sort of game I can see Cardiff getting a result in because Bournemouth, of course, with their form has not been great. Bournemouth have picked up a great win against QPR, but you would argue still not a great performance for me, not for just scoring the one goal. I really want to predict Cardiff something because it probably might actually benefit me, but I'm, I can't not back Bournemouth with their squad. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Bournemouth. Bristol City QPR, this might come as a shot, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Bristol City. I think Bristol City at home have improved. QPR, to me, looked very, very out of sorts against Bournemouth. This game, they've got to bounce back in if they want to be in the top six. And I think Bristol City might actually be too much for them. They beat them already this season, Bristol City, so I think they'll do it again. Forest and Huddersfield. Forest picked up a really good win against Huddersfield last time. It was their first game of the season where they didn't have Chris Hutton in charge. So... For prediction, it's tricky. I'm going to go for 1-1. Both teams will be feeling sharp for the fact they both played on Boxing Day. And finally, Stoke and Derby. This does destine a 0-0 draw, but I might edge Stoke barely. I'm going to go for a 1-0 victory to Stoke. But guys, that wraps it up for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do give the video a like. It just tremendously helps the channel. Please do hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. It does really help. And please share this channel to as many people as you can. All of that really helps. But that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary. If you saw the end of this video, and as always, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care.